Alright, welcome back to the new Super Mario Bros. DS level editing tutorials. Uh, this is part two. Today we're going to learn about objects and sprites. So uh, go ahead and just open up any world, any level area. I'll go ahead and open up area one of world one one. And uh, here's our first level. So objects and sprites uh, incorporate all these props, the tiles, question mark blocks, goombas, pipes, all of the stuff that Mario interacts with in the level, basically. And if you remember, we have these different buttons up here, entrances, paths, progress paths, views. You can only edit sprites if you've got this button clicked down. So if I click down this, I can no longer select any of these objects. So as you click around them, you see on the right side here where they are in the, uh, in the palette and see it's, it's uh, highlighted by a red rectangle. Uh, suppose you have started fresh like you should. Now if you're making a level you probably want to start completely fresh. You don't want to edit a level that already exists because it'll feel very similar to that level that you've edited. So what I like to do is I like to go in here and say delete all objects yes and delete all sprites yes. So now we've got a completely blank template to work with. But now you see I can't select anything to look at the palette. You have to choose create an object to create a sprite. I'll go over objects first. So create an object and it'll pop up in the top left corner. Same as if you create a sprite, it'll pop up in the top left corner. When you create an object, the first one that comes by default is the, uh, is the, uh, the pull for the flag. See? Now you can uh, change it just by clicking another object here. Now what you'll notice is that there's three tabs here. Tile set 0, tile set 1, and tile set 2. Tile set 0 and tile set 2 are in every single level that you play. Uh, every single level that you make will have this palette available for you. This includes uh, very common objects like the pipe, bricks, bricks that contain things like this question mark block containing a one-up mushroom and uh, so on. Tile set 2 includes all of the uh, the post level stuff. This stuff comes after the flag and for whatever reason we get these uh, these olive looking uh, blocks that you can use and as well as this little graphic that you can put outside of a that you've probably seen this uh, in some of the castle levels where there'll be a door here or something. But where the exciting stuff happens is in tile set one. This is where all your terrain is. See, we can. There's your terrain. The uh, bottom sides, the left and right sides, slopes, uh, flowers, bushes, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this changes depending on what tile set you're using for the level. So check this out. We'll go to level configuration, go to graphics, and here we got this, it says tile set. There's a whole bunch of tile sets in here. A bunch of them are repeating. For example, uh, we'll see that 0 is grassland, 8 is grassland, 12 is grassland, and so on. Uh, just like we've got two cliffs. Some of them uh, are doubled up, but they are slightly different. For example, we have underground with ice, and somewhere in here we have just regular underground. Uh, here we go, underground and underground dark blue, and they all look slightly different. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just change this to uh, the forest tile and hit OK. So now you see that tile set 1 has changed. All of this stuff is different. However, tile set 0 still contains the bricks and the pipes and all that. And tile set 2 still contains the uh, castle and these olive blocks. So uh, I'll go ahead and show you how to make some terrain here real quick. So we have uh, our tops, we have our sides, we have the edges and the slopes and everything. Now it would probably take a really long time to make something if you went like this, create an object, change it back to this, create an object, set the, uh, you know, the edge, you see we're starting to make a, uh, a tile, right, or a, uh, the, the, the form of the terrain. 
Uh, this would take a really long time doing one tile at a time. So we're not going to do that. What we're going to do instead is a little bit faster. So usually the first few objects are the inside tiles. So here's the inside tile. Now if you hold can or if you hold shift and then click down and drag while still holding shift, you increase the size of the tile that you've got. And then of course this is a lot faster than doing it one at a time for every single tile that you want to put in the game, right? So now we've got the uh, this, the the middle of the tile. We're going to hold shift again. Now this is the right side of the tile. See how it, how it looks very nice and uniform? Now, we've got this set to the size that we want to put over here for the uh, for this side, right? Well, instead of going back up to create an object, resizing to what you want, you can hold control, click on this and drag it, and you've made a copy of it. See, this guy's still over here. This guy's a new one. So uh, then we just change it. Now we got all that. I uh, I don't usually go to create object every time I create a new object. In fact, what I usually do is just click on it, something that already exists, resize it to where I want, and then choose the uh, the new tile. Pretty nice, right? And I do the same uh, throughout the whole level. There we go. So what you see now is this actually looks just like it does in the game. If you're making a level that looks like this, you're doing it wrong. This isn't very interesting, right? You want the uh, the nice form, the shapes on, on all this. You want it all to look very nice and look like it, it comes in the game. Uh, one thing I want to show you real quick is that there is a layering, layering uh, depth that matters in this. So uh, I created this object first and then I created this object afterwards. Now watch what happens when I put it on here. See how it copies over the uh, tile that's underneath of it including the transparency? That'll happen. You, you can't uh, have two tiles stack on each other and have them both show. This is actually not too bad of a thing in the long run. So say we want this to be a little bit bigger we can just do this and there we go there's a lot of overlapping going on but the game doesn't doesn't really care you know uh, one thing that you want to keep in mind when making your tiles is that every tile set has something like this see this little corner piece we have corner pieces that'll go in there so let's go ahead and find it there we go. See how that, that fits nicely? Every every tile set has something that lets you do corners and every tile set will have something that lets you do uh, the bottom edges too. So let's go ahead and move this up a little bit. Put this right here. Move this down here. So say uh, we want to put something like this. Now you'll see that I'm doing a lot of copying over tiles. I don't normally do that. Uh, for whatever reason, I feel that it's it's kind of unclean, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, whichever way you prefer to do it is fine. I prefer to not, you know, not do that. I tend to do this. Actually, here I'll copy over this because it saves objects. So now we actually have this corner piece here too, somewhere in here. Uh, they can be tricky to find and a lot of these look very similar but see how this matches the corner and this matches the corner over here if you flip these around it doesn't look right anymore so uh, you know use your eye to tell if you're using the right one if you have any doubts uh, open up one of the levels that uses the tile set that you're using and look at how the uh, developers did it and what tiles that they're using in these places so uh, now I'm going to show you a little bit about slopes. So I click on this slope over here. The first thing you'll notice, obviously, is that there's a lot of weird space here, and this, it doesn't look quite right. You have to get it so that it's a perfect square, so that this distance and this distance are equal. 
uh, basically you want the diagonal line to go straight to, through the middle. Some tile sets include slopes that are at a, uh, at a 3 to 4 ratio, whereas instead of going straight down like this, they'll go more like this. And so uh, if your lock is 2 by 2, you'll see it go from this corner all the way down to this corner. So depending on the slope that you're using, just make sure that the slopes go from corner to corner. So I'll go ahead and put this in. Just right there looks fine. Now you'll see a little missing block here. Uh, some tile sets will do this, some others won't. But sometimes you'll have to put in the little block and you'll find it down here. Now here's something tricky about slopes. If Mario were to run up this slope here and go over the uh, edge here onto the flat land, he would actually freeze for a second there and the player would have to let go of left and then repress left again to continue walking up the hill. I don't know why it does this, but you have a tile that overcomes that. Usually it's object 23 or 24. Um, with each tile set it's different, but usually it's in the area where the slopes are. Uh, again, check uh, the levels that come with the game to figure out which ones these are, but the underground, the snow, the the grassland, they all they all do this. So we'll change it to object 23 and you just put that right here. Just one of them right there. Now when Mario runs up this hill he'll actually cross over it without getting stuck. Uh, one annoying thing about slopes is that I can't click that so you have to move the slope out of the way and then put it back in. It's kind of annoying but that's the way she goes. So there we go. We made a little slope. The uh, same thing with up here does not apply down here. So you can put any tile you want down here. In fact, uh, usually there's tiles that look better, like the one that we used right here. This one looks good there. Uh, different tile sets again will do different things with this. So uh, let's go ahead and just make this look a little bit better. Now uh, when you're copying things, instead of copying the one and then moving it over, and then copying this part and then moving it over, it's actually a lot easier just to go like this. Right? So, Also, it's once you've made areas like this, it's a lot easier to find these inside corners using a terrain that you've already built. You know, as opposed to, you know, copying something else over and then choosing the tile again. So there we go. We made a, a neat little area that, uh, you know, we've got a slope in there. We've got a little bit of a hill and stuff like that. Now, after you've created an object, you can go to tile set zero and make it a, make it a pipe if you want. You don't have to necessarily, uh, stay in the same tile set. Um... One thing you'll notice here too is with some tile sets like this one, there's some weird little blocks. These aren't intended to be actually used. Uh, so if you're using a tile set that does this, don't include that in your game. You want it like that. Just like how this has a, a blank square underneath of it. The interesting thing, part of it is that since this is actually part of the object, if I move this down over here, this over, you know, lays on top of this. Even though this looks transparent, it's really not. It's it's forcing the transparent for this for this block. And obviously, that's not good. So that's uh that's basically it with uh, objects. Uh, I thought I was gonna have time to get to sprites with this video, but that will be the next video. So, um, that's it for this one. I'll see you in a minute.